Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about the romance books I read in the later half of January. I have nine books to talk about today so let's get started. We're going to talk about them in the order that I read them. First I have Tender is a Storm by Johanna Lindsay. I actually read this as a dedicated video for my channel members. So if you're a channel member of mine, if you are not information to join is down below. But I read this book as an exclusive reading vlog for them. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was my first Johanna Lindsay and I honestly wanted to see if the cover lived up to what was inside the book. This is also my first book in a very long time that was an American historical, like a Western. And that's all I'm gonna say about this book. You can go check out that vlog to know my thoughts on it. I think the first book that I ended up finishing in 2024 is Mafia Mistress by Mila Finelli, which is like, mafia to the extreme like very campy mafia i feel like and um like it kind of reminded me of 365 days kind of like wildness okay and uh, i decided to pick up the next book in the series which is like a completion of the characters from book one's story so this is mafia darling the second book in the kings of italy series and i can't really talk about this book all that much because it is book number two in a series about the same couple. In the first book, our heroine is I think like 18, 19, and she gets put in a arranged marriage with this guy named Giulio, and they're from Italy, and like his father arranged it all. He's like this big mafia boss man. Um, and so she ends up being taken by them to go to Italy and to marry his son, right? Um, but then the dad ends up falling for her instead. <laughs> These books are just so bizarre, but fun at the same time. I have a lot of fun reading them. I like just have a grand old time with them. They're really fun. Um, so if you want like a fun mafia romance series, I recommend these. Um, I did prefer book number two to book number one just because the hero Fausto in this book, um, he gets a little bit softer towards the heroine. And if y'all know me, I'm not really an alpha guy. Like I am not into the alpha dudes. So I like when the hero's heart finally softens for the heroine. Next, I have A Soul to Heal by Opal Rain. This is the second book in the Duskwalker Bride series. This book has been on many a TBRs because I've been wanting to continue on. The length of these books though is very intimidating for me. Um, I did feel like this book was pretty long. I kind of wish that the author would narrow it down a little bit, but that's just me. I'm like very intimidated by long books. So this story starts out at a dark point. The heroine of the story, Delora, is very deep in depression. She doesn't care if she lives or dies. Let's just say that. I did forget to mention this series takes place on a fantasy. I'm assuming it's a fantasy realm because I don't think it's like our world. Anyway, there's humans, there's demons, and then there's dust walkers. There's three different beings. So humans get eaten by demons. Demons hunt humans. And the more humans demons consume, like the more humanity they have, right? Um, and then Duskwalkers are like what you see on the cover. Nameless is our hero. He does not have a name, so he's named Nameless. And he is a Duskwalker and they're these like demon kind of beings and they kind of take the form of the things they eat. So for example, you get to see in this book, the first animal or first thing that the Duskwalker eats as a child becomes its skull and then like, as they eat more animals, like they'll get more body parts relating to said animal. And then if they, the more humans they consume, the more humanity they have as well. Anyway, so Dolora in here has just witnessed her abusive husband cheating on her and uh, she decides to kill him and his mistress. Like you go girl, <laughs> okay? Anyway, the um, town end up figuring out what she did and they end up traveling to the Vale, which is where all the demons live. And I think it's, think of it kind of like as like a pit, kind of. Um, and like the humans live up here and then the pit, the Vale is kind of like this, I feel like. And then so they push her off a cliff into the pit, like fully believing that she is going to die. But she ends up landing on top of Nameless. He's just wandering around the woods one day and plop, a human woman lands on him. He thinks that she's dead, but she's actually not. And he is very lonely. And he actually has a friend, the guy from book number one, Orpheus from book one. He has witnessed 
his relationship with his human. And he's like, I want something like that. I would love a companion in life. And so he decides to nurse this woman back to health. She's literally on the brink of death. Almost every single bone is broken in her body and she's somehow still alive. When she finally comes to, she realizes the situation that she's in, that she's with this dangerous looking guy. And she's like, I don't care. Let him take me, I don't care. Like she is in this state of being where she does not care whether she lives or dies. But this is definitely, book is definitely a healing journey with Dolora. Dolora is healing throughout this entire book. And um, there's a little element in here that I want to mention. There is the surprise baby trope. So just be aware of that, that like happens for the large chunk of this book. This book is on Kindle Unlimited. Um, there's mental health representation. It's monster romance. There's a near death experience plus size representation. There is a size difference and an innocent hero. I really do love these stories because I think the world that Opal Rain has created is so unique. And I just wanna keep on reading and reading about more of these Duskwalkers finding the love of their life. And I just saw the cover for the new one that just got announced, like the new cover got revealed. I love it. And so I definitely need to read more in this series. We're going back to historicals, the historical romance genre. Um, I picked up Wicked Intentions by Elizabeth Hoyt. Here is the step back for that bad boy. Love it. She has a beautiful two page step backs, but this is the first book in her Maiden Lane series. And I've read a few books in the series. I think I read book number seven and book number eight. And so I wanted to go back and restart the series because I own quite a lot of books by Elizabeth Hoyt, specifically in this Maiden Lane series. I think there's a murder mystery in here. The hero wants to figure out who murdered his mistress. And so he hires kind of like our heroine in here who runs this home for abandoned children with her brother ends up hiring her to help navigate the streets of St. Giles because he's of higher class than her. He doesn't really know the area. And so she helps him try to find his mistress's murderer and then they end up falling for each other. I will say I did prefer the other two books in the series to this one. I think just because I loved just those characters more. I don't, I don't know. I don't know, honestly. And I also just think this book was very brutal at times and that's not really my cup of tea. I don't really love all the stabbing and the blood and the gore. Like that's just not me. So not me, the personal thing. But um, this was actually really like immersive book. Uh, and it was kind of like thrilling sometimes. Like was like, oh my gosh, they need to get out of there. They need to get out of there. Like there's someone coming. <laughs> so um, I feel like it's a great start to a series and I will be continuing. This one has different social classes. It's a historical romance. It's the first book in a series, a murder mystery romance. You have a rake hero and a widow. Next, I would briefly love to mention the two books that I ended up reading for a fantasy romance new releases vlog that I actually posted, I believe like two videos ago. First is Follow Me to the U Tree by Desiree M. Nicole. This is a very short novella that's like historical fantasy. Our heroine who can hear death, it's just by the way, death as a character can hear death, comes across our hero traveling across these moors and decides to join him on his journey. The hero has ulcerative colitis and its own voices representation for that. This one was really immersive. I love like the whimsical aspect to it and I really enjoyed it. I also really enjoyed Ballad of Sea and Sky by Madeline Elliott. This is another fantasy book and it's about our heroine who is a selkie, who's kind of like a mermaid, and um, she ends up getting kidnapped by a siren pirate and their families like are at war, so. I really enjoyed both of these and um, you can go check out that vlog to know more of my thoughts. Next, I have A Five Minute Life by Emma Scott. I finally read this beauty. I adore this cover and I've been wanting to read it for a while. I got this at Book Bonanza last year and I got it signed, but look at these beautiful tabs. I haven't tabbed up a book in a while, but right when I started this book, I got the urge and yeah. I love this. The um, light blue, I think, are quotes. Yeah, quotes that I love. Um, I think purple is like their kissing scenes, like how in love they are with each other. And then gray are just scenes that I loved in general. So I, uh, I love this book. This was so good. This is the romance between Thea and Jimmy. Thea was in a car accident two years ago. Her and her parents were on the way to her sister's graduation and they ended up getting in a car crash. Thea's parents did not end up surviving and Thea experienced a lot of brain damage and she now has the second worst case of amnesia in human history. She lives for five minutes. Her memory can only last for five minutes and then it restarts again. So every five minutes, 
she loses her memory. Then enters our hero, Jimmy, who ends up getting a job at this town to work at a sanitarium. It's the same sanitarium that Thea is living at. And despite Thea's memory loss, she ends up falling for this guy in five minute increments, even though she forgets him. Oh, it's so devastating. She forgets him every five minutes, but still like she ends up slowly falling for him anyway. Like, I don't really know how to describe it. Even with her amnesia, she ends up falling for this man. And Jimmy falls head over heels in love with Thea. And he knows right from the beginning. He's like, oh my gosh, this cannot happen. Like, no, I work here. She's a patient. She doesn't even remember me. These feelings that I'm having towards her need to stop. He has these short little bursts of conversation with her where they connect over music and love and families and he's like falling for her but every time she reintroduces herself as Thea and asks him what his name is every five minutes his heart breaks a little bit because he thinks like am I not enough for this woman to remember me there's a turning point in this book when doctors start to realize and Jimmy specifically who asked these doctors whether or not Thea actually has this amnesia and there turns out to be a procedure that can help her possibly get her memories back. The beginning of the story completely gripped me. I was hanging on the edge of my seat. I could not put this book down. I wanted to know what happened to Thea. Like I needed to know what happened to her. I really enjoyed her as a character. And Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy is the sweetest man ever. Like he is so sweet. And I love both these characters because you don't really see a lot of doubly sweet characters falling for each other, but these two, are both in love with the idea of love and I love them so much. They are like total rays of sunshine and they fall for each other. And this man has the most patience in the entire world and would honestly wait until the world ended to be with her. Like he would wait forever to be with her. I loved so many of the quotes in this book, but I'll just highlight two, I'll restrain myself. Okay, this one says, I think everyone deserves happiness. It's out there waiting to come to us, but we have to be open to receiving it. We have to know we deserve it in order to give it a chance. And the other one is, she was all the light and color I could ever want. Oh, there's also like this element of artistry in this, whether it comes to music, the hero plays the guitar, loves to sing like to himself and, He's like very shy about his music, but the heroine is just like there for it. He, she's like, serenade me, do it, I want it. <laughs> and Thea is a painter, like an artist, and she really lets her inner turmoil fly through her art. And it's beautiful to just read about. I wish I could witness it with my eyeballs. Um, There are a few trigger warnings in here. There's sexual assault, not from the hero, just by the way. Recounting of abuse in the foster system, ableism and a car crash, and also um death of parents. I really enjoyed this one. I need more people to read it. I think it's very underhyped too because there's not an audiobook and a lot of Emma Scott's books do have audiobooks but this one doesn't but like I need more people to read it please. Next I have Resisting the Grump by Ashley Munoz. This book has flashbacks in it just by the way. It flashes back when the heroine is in high school and the hero is a little bit older than her. This takes place in a small town and um, growing up, the heroine wore braces and her hair color was different. I don't really remember. But anyway, she does not look, the way she did in high school does not look like what she does right now, okay? Anyway, so there's this older boy when she was growing up that she had a huge crush on and she would like follow him around everywhere. Kind of like teenager love. She would kind of be on like the verge of stalking him, okay? Um, and then something happens where she just can't forgive him even though he doesn't really know she exists and all these years later she like hasn't really been over him i want to say i don't really know how to describe it anyway um she moves back to her small town after something that happened she realizes her parents have befriended a guy who lives up on the mountain and they tell her like oh he doesn't really have a lot of family but we've like kind of like adopted him into the family like he's has he's like been around while you've been off doing stuff in new york so um we want you to meet him and it's the guy that she like basically stalked growing up, um, but he does not recognize her. And um, she kind of has this hidden identity aspect while he ends up falling for her and he doesn't realize why she hates him so much when they first meet. And that's because like she thinks that he broke her heart and stuff like that when she was younger. I found it a little bit unbelievable that he cannot recognize her. <laughs> personally personally very unbelievable um and yeah i just don't really love lying and secret keeping and hidden identity but that's just me um, but i do know a lot of people loved this book um and i did really like like the grumpy sunshine aspect and the hero 
it was very spoony with how caring he was and the lengths he was willing to go to to make this woman his. And my last book for January is Storm by Carrie and Cole. I think this is her first ever book that she's published. It is the first book in the Ashes and Ember series. Um, I know a lot of my friends really enjoy this series. I've read uh, Torn, which is a spinoff, I think, to this series and like second generation possibly. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, so this one's about Storm who ends up, I think her name's Evie or Evelyn or something. I don't know. He ends up getting stuck in his car with her during a snowstorm because her car kind of like veers off the road um, during a snowstorm and he's trying to help her. And so she, he tries to bring her somewhere in his car, but then his car breaks down. And so the two of them, along with his dog, are stuck in his car for like two days in this horrible snowstorm. And the two of them kind of like get to know one another. They bicker and banter all that jazz. And then while they're trapped together, he realizes that maybe he's getting feelings for a woman. He's never really felt like possibly monogamous feelings for a woman. And um, cause he's like this hotshot playboy rock star guy. He's a part of the Ashes and Embers band. And uh, she has a boyfriend though of like the past 12 years. We hate him, okay, we hate him. Anyway, so it's their romance and it's very forbidden because she is in a relationship, there is cheating. And here there's cheating. So tropes for this one um, is forced proximity and snowstorm because they're stuck in that truck together. I kind of wish the heroine would have like broken off with her boyfriend sooner because I feel like it was a lot of time of her just cheating on him to cheat on him. <laughs> anyway, but that's just me. That's just me. But I will be continuing on with the series. I do want to read more books. So let me know what your favorite book is in this series. I would love to know. Anyways, to have it, those are all the books that I read in the later half of January. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a strawberry emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye all.